And looks like we have some more updates from around Jupiter, from Jupiter's moons. Exciting new discoveries based on the observations from the Juno mission, but also from the observations by the James Webb Space Telescope. Once again, discovering something very unique and something we had no idea even existed. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with a brief overview of the robotic missions around Jupiter. And that's actually because most of these discoveries are sort of the confirmation of the original discoveries from the Galileo, the first Jupiter mission that was active between 1995 and 2003. And in this case it basically studied the gas giant, and of course its moons, and made some of the first mysterious discoveries that not a lot of scientists could explain. There are actually too many to mention, but a couple of discoveries we're discussing today were also seen by Galileo. And so as a result of all of these initial observations, NASA decided to start the next part, the Juno mission, which officially began exploring Jupiter in 2016. And though it technically finished its primary mission, it's now doing its extended mission stage, in reality it's doing even more science now than it did before, and really mostly focusing on the Galilean moons, Jupiter's largest moons, Io, Ganymede, Europa and Callisto. And so in the last few months we've actually discussed quite a few of these discoveries, but in pretty much every single video I mentioned that there seems to be nothing coming out of one of the moons, Callisto. No major discoveries, no major revelations, well actually pretty much nothing. And that's until now. We finally have something from Callisto. And not just something, something relatively big. Here, using recent observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, the researchers discovered a relatively large gas cloud of carbon dioxide across various parts of the atmosphere of Callisto itself, although calling this atmosphere is maybe not really correct. It's more of an exosphere, a really really thin atmosphere that exists around many moons. Although in reality, this is a confirmation of the original discovery, or I guess the original hint, seen by Galileo over 20 years ago. And so this time by using James Webb Space Telescope's near-infrared spectrograph, researchers behind the study in the description definitively confirmed CO2 in many parts of Callisto, but not equally distributed with certain parts containing higher concentration, specifically a little bit higher toward the south pole compared to the north. But intriguingly, the main gas here was oxygen, not CO2, and that by itself is already quite intriguing, but we don't really know what kind of oxygen or where it came from, so it's actually kind of early to make any speculations. But the question is of course, where is this coming from? Now on the one hand, we know that Callisto's surface is basically covered in craters. And it's also covered with different types of ice, mostly water and CO2, but possibly something else. So it is quite possible that this is just a result of impacts mixed with the radiation from Jupiter that potentially blasts the surface of Callisto in the process releasing CO2 as well. But on the other hand, it could also be coming from within Callisto, and specifically from within its ocean, with CO2 then seeping through the surface, possibly through various cracks. And so the actual origin is currently unknown, but this is a super exciting discovery because it basically confirms CO2 cycle of some sorts on this particular moon. Now for now it's believed to be some kind of a geological cycle or potentially based on various impacts, but for all we know there's maybe more to the story. Now, I'm not saying life, but I'm not not saying it. But apart from CO2, something else was discovered as well. Specifically compounds containing carbon and nitrogen and potentially containing triple bonds. Or possibly even something resembling complex organic molecules that either have been transported by meteorites or maybe even came from within. And that is also quite exciting and needs to be investigated further. What exactly are those complex molecules and what created them? And interestingly discovering nitrogen around Jupiter is a pretty big deal. In the past it was difficult to figure out any sources of nitrogen around the Jupiter system. And so finding first signs of it around Callisto is a pretty big discovery as well. But these are just the first detections and we don't really know much else. I'm sure the follow-ups in the next few months will uncover more, but that's all we have for now. Although more excitingly, we're actually going to be uncovering more with the two robotic missions that are going to be orbiting Jupiter and discovering all of this once again in early 2030s. Here we're talking about ESA's JUICE mission and NASA's CLIPPER mission. 
Juice actually launched last year in 2023 and Clipper launches this year, with both missions starting around 2031. And intriguingly, a recent study studying the Europa Clipper mission that's going to be studying Europa mostly, but possibly focusing on other moons later, discovered that its instruments are not just going to be able to conduct preliminary studies on habitability of these moons, it might technically also be able to discover life if it does exist here. And this is based on a very recent discovery where the scientists testing the instruments of Europa used tiny ice crystals that were fired at the instruments at very high velocities, as essentially would be happening around Jupiter in real life, mostly because it's going to be moving at relatively high speeds, decided to include certain crystals with bacteria inside. And they discovered that even having a tiny amount of bacteria inside these crystals could be discovered by the instruments by identifying certain organic compounds, certain fatty acids, and amino acids. And so if organic life exists here, there's a really big chance it could be discovered as well. Which means that by 2030s, we're not only going to know if Europa is potentially habitable underneath the ice, but maybe even discover some signs of life, if it of course exists. Although its primary mission is still just determining the composition of the ice inside, and thus figuring out what's happening inside this moon. This is not really a life-finding mission, as much as it's a geological mission trying to understand Europa's ocean and the moon's habitability. And so I guess we're going to discover more in approximately, like, what, nine, nine years? Yeah, in nine years. And then, the last but not the least, and I guess technically the most exciting discoveries, are once again from Io, the beautiful volcanic moon that Juno has been orbiting several times, with some of the closest approaches happening in the last few months. Actually, on December 30th of 2023, it approached the moon at a distance of 1500 kilometers or 930 miles, and then in February of 2024, just a few months later, at a relatively similar distance, but observing very different areas. And though the main purpose of this flyby was to basically reduce its orbital period around Jupiter to 33 days, this opportunity was used to study the volcanism of Io by taking as many pictures of the surface as possible, presenting Io in a very different way as we've basically never seen it before, with the main mission of course being understanding the source of volcanism, and more specifically the global magma ocean underneath. And that's because currently, researchers believe that all of this is a result of tidal interaction with Jupiter and the three other large moons. And though on other moons this results in some kind of a water ocean, on Io this seems to result in a global magma ocean. Something that the researchers still want to understand a little bit better. But interestingly, even during the flyby, because some of the regions here we've never really seen before, especially in the northern latitudes, here Juno was able to capture something absolutely incredible. Basically, a bunch of close-ups of a really large lava lake called Loki Patera approximately 200 kilometers long. And though it took a few months to analyze this, this is basically a recreation of what all of this potentially looks like. It's a lava lake that has a bunch of islands in the middle, and also seems to contain almost like an ice sheet on top. Except that this is not ice ice, this is basically glass, or technically obsidian. And this was detected through unusual reflections on the surface. Reflections that did resemble obsidian that we find on Earth with the lava itself only being visible on the outskirts or basically somewhere near the shore of this lake. With a few more observations of the very thin atmosphere or exosphere around Io, even suggesting that Io was probably like this for not just millions of years, but basically since the beginning, four and a half billion years. This was discovered through the analysis of volcanic gases coming from Io, which actually usually end up producing beautiful, powerful aurora around Jupiter, you can learn a little bit more about this in one of the videos in the description. But by basically analyzing isotopes of sulfur and discovering that the heavy isotope seems to dominate everything, it becomes possible to determine the age of the exosphere. And it does seem to be super, super old. It suggests that similar interaction of Io and Jupiter has been definitely going on for over 4 billion years. Which maybe implies that the Jupiter system has not really changed much since the formation of the solar system. So definitely some really exciting discoveries, but once again these are just preliminary discoveries, and at least for now. The mission is still far from over, and there's still so much to discover about Jupiter and about its moons. And we'll definitely discuss all of this in some of the future videos. But until then, 
Check out previous discoveries from Jupiter in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who was learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.